Howdy. A lot of cartoons coming out right now are CGI remakes of shows we grew up with. Unfortunately, far too often they're pale imitations of the original, and far too often significantly <laughs> uglier. Maybe they serve as a momentary distraction for kids, but they're often hated by parents and older fans. Do they have merit? Did they flop? Or did they succeed? Let's find out. This is the seven failed or hated modern kids cartoons. We'll be focusing on cartoons from 2015 onwards, but mainly focusing on 2020 onwards. I've chosen a year as early as 2015, as some cartoons might have started production in 2015, but still be relevant in 2020. With that said, let's begin. You suck. Let's start with number seven. Bob the Builder, the 2015 reboot. See, this is why I chose 2015. I've just got to talk about this thing. Behold CGI yeah! Bob. Behold this monstrosity and weep. It's not pretty, is it? What was wrong with the old minimalist stop motion design anyway? Just, just look at this face. This is not your precious Bob the Builder. This is creepy pasta Bob the Builder. <laughs> That sense of terror you felt in your gut when you saw that tiny-eyed stare? This can only be the work of a creepy pasta. Is Bob about to explode in hyper-realistic blood and say, you're next and spell you're wrong? So what happened to give us this gruesome defilement? Well, Mattel, the toy company, bought Bob the Builder, Thomas and Friends, and Fireman Sam back in 2011. There's a big toy market in these franchises, and Mattel was more than happy to capitalize on that market with remakes. Their new Creepy Pasta Bob hit TV screens in 2015, and I think Tina's words encapsulate the wider audience response quite well. What the f have they done? People were confused and slightly disturbed. And even if they were able to look beyond this deeply unpopular makeover, many viewers were left underwhelmed by the new show. For example, let's see Braden's review. Boring. The reboot was dumb comedy, boring stories, and lackluster music. Mattel turned Bob the Builder into a snore fest. User Zombie gave his two cents as well, and he noted some things I didn't really like either. Nauseating animation. I started to become sick watching. The character voice acting is very annoying. <laughs> Did I say red? I meant green, Bob! Don't know if you can understand, but Bob says... Yay. The characters are now dumber than ever before, and the personalities of all the dig equipment feel the same. I mean, the original Bob the Builder was certainly never my favourite cartoon, but like so many British cartoons, they led the way in building likeable characters and a colourful world for kids. All through painstakingly careful stop motion, but this new CG Bob felt so bland that I could barely remember a thing about him. On the plus side, there was one thing I liked about this remake. The inclusivity of having women in construction is very refreshing. You know, back in the 90s, we used to never see women shown in construction. This reminds kids that anyone, regardless of gender, can work in the construction industry. So props for that, but by jeebus that face is ugly. You suck. Number 6. Rugrats the 2021 Remake Recently, the original three Rugrats creators came back with the original Rugrats voice actors. Everyone joined forces to help create a full CG reboot of Rugrats. Personally, I wanted this remake to be a new interpretation of a classic show with some modern changes. Like the parents were now millennial parents instead of Generation X parents, and the kids were now Generation Alphas in a new technologically advanced world. How cool does that sound in concept? And technically, yeah, we got that. But goodness gracious, it is ugly. What is with all these modern CG Garfield horrors that just look like butt? In this case, it might be because originally, Rugrats had a unique, but admittedly kind of ugly animation style. Trying to recreate that unique style in CG is a valiant effort, but I'm not sure that Rugrats can look good in CG. Look at Tommy's original potato head. It's a miracle that Rugrats look good ever. Anyway, the reboot was not well received on arrival. Fans in particular were just outraged. But let's start by hearing from user reviews. Spoiler, 
fans almost unanimously panned this reboot. Let's start by seeing what the top reviewer Messi said. This is so sad to see remade. Grandpa sounds like he's 25. I don't know about 25, he sounds a bit younger. What did Thunder King think? Who asked for this? This was an absolute disgrace. Another classic memories ruined with this hash. What's hash? Some people were left feeling less outraged and more just meh. Such as Rockwoods. It's very dull. The animation is too clunky. The dialogue is nothing like the original and it's just not in tune with the original. But if it's for the kiddos, then I get it. Well, yeah, it's primarily not for us adults, but that doesn't mean the parents shouldn't be able to enjoy it too. That being said, the Vances watched it with their kids and they weren't exactly riveted to the screen. The kids lost interest really quick. But almost without exception, reviewers complained about the animation and old fans really didn't like that the adult voices had changed. Personally, the adult voices didn't bother me that much. It's been a long time. As long as they do a good job portraying the characters, I'm fine with it. Interestingly, even though the show was panned by the majority of fans, most of the critics were okay with it. Professional critics like Kristen felt it kept the spirit of the original show quite well. Once the initial shock of the oversaturated, glossy animation wears off, Rugrats is charming enough to invite in a new generation of fans. So reviews were split, but what did I think? Well, I really liked that they brought the original voice actors for the kids and the original creators. I think that was really important. And it shocks me that even 20 plus years since the original, these voice actors still capture those young voices is so well. But the big problem? This show does not start on a good foot. And I think this may have been part of what caused that massive hate from viewers. Much of the first episode is that notorious animation white noise, where lots of colourful visuals and movement are happening on screen to occupy small kids. But nothing is being said or done that actually means anything. We start with a prolonged, boring car chase scene with a pug-fugly clay dinosaur followed by a long drawn out scene of the kids playing with and eating mud. And I say mud because th that's what they say it is. But when your CG looks this ugly, it looks like Phil and Lil are playing with, yeah. Why would you start your reboot on characters playing with literal crap? And then Chucky gets scared because he thinks he eats a worm. Hint, in the original series, we didn't miss the gross out parts. People miss the way the kids would create their own imaginary world, all from their unique interpretations of the adult world. Fortunately, I did find episode two onwards a lot more fun, such as where Susie is interpreting pictures of a book in order to cure Chucky of turning into a worm, or where Angelica put puts grandpa on an elderly dating app called Silver Beagles, which is a scene right up there with the original show and charm that had me laughing. Personally, I'm split, because episode two onwards, I often found this interesting. I enjoyed some of the changes they made to the adults. I think characters like grandpa actually got a lot more depth here. Like, instead of being the silent generation, grandpa's now a baby boomer generation. Now he's a sort of Bob Ross type aging hippie. It's a shame he also looks like his eyeballs are stuck in his glasses. Ugh. And I love he's doing yoga, but he looks so uncanny when he does it. Oh. And the now millennial parents, Stu and Drew, had some interesting scenes too. Anyway, viewers were just very mixed on this Rugrats reboot. Many viewers just hated it. The critics were more forgiving for its positive traits. But it seems that no one alive liked the animation. The show's been renewed for a third season, so I don't think it's a failure, but it's definitely been a divisive reboot. And reluctantly for number five, Caillou's New Adventures. Why? Why is it returned? I still remember the elation I felt when I learned the original Caillou was canceled and buried forever. Kids love the program, but parents seem to be happy this show is ending. On social media, parents complained Caillou was, quote, a whiny brat. That perhaps parental disgust of the show and its bad influence had finally made the producers say, hey, we just made a cartoon about a sociopathic bald child maniac. What the hell is wrong with us? But then Caillou came back again in 2016 and again in 2021, because apparently the world just wasn't miserable enough as is. And clearly what we were missing is just more Caillou in our lives. The only joy this horrid Canadian lunatic gives me is the sheer amount of creativity he has inspired on GoAnimate. 
Anyway, my endless trepidation aside, how is the 2016 show? Well, personally, I actually think it's more tolerable than the original show. Caillou's voice no longer makes me want to be violently ill. The lava's getting higher! In fact, he kind of sounds like Tails to me. If Eggman needs to stay, he can stay. Who knows? He might not be so bad after all. All you have to do is kick your legs really fast! Turns out Caillou's new voice is also the voice of Lily from Pokemon. Huh. I've been feeling more and more certain that we're getting a lot closer to Bob. Anyway, I reluctantly watch Caillou bake a cake, build a snowman, go to a toy store, slide a sled, and he was perfectly tolerable. He was tolerable to me, but not so much to others. This fella's reputation has not cleared, he is still a hated young man. So let's see why this new Caillou series gets 3.5 out of 10 stars on IMDb. M for Sting said, This is worse than the original. The theme song is worse and the animation is bad. I don't like it. I don't know, I thought it looked better than the original, but that's not really saying much. I hated that kind of dreamy white background effect it had, it looked awful. Ugh. What did Eric say? Crappy animation and that bald spoiled brat is back. At least the original had some charm. Story has lazy writing. Thanks for reading. What freaking charm. I thought the original Caillou was way more whiny and annoying. What about me, Mommy? What can I be? Actually, I can proudly state the new episodes taught me how to balance a fidget spinner on one hand. Look at good. Like, I'm not recommending 2016 Caillou, but it's not as abysmal as the original show. Fun fact, my mum's an early learning teacher, and her main complaint with the original Caillou is it taught children to speak in this whiny tone. I need it, Rosie! So she had to reteach children to talk without using that ear-piercing drivel that the original Caillou uses. And both reboots don't use that original whiny tone. <gasps> it really is hot. So, 100 extra points right there. In the Caillou 2021 CG reboot, Caillou keeps his original character from the 2016 version. Though, yeah, like all of these, he looks more terrible in CG. I like in these reboots that he typically wears a hat, too, as it draws less attention to the notoriously stupid decision to make six-year-old Caillou bald. I also like that, particularly in the CG remake, conflicts do happen, and Caillou handles the conflicts like a decent kid and less like a sociopath. Sometimes it's hard to know what to do when you're dealing with a big problem. Plus, I think there's a lot more creativity here with how they explain problems. For example, the Giant on the Track episode. And finally, how did these shows perform? Well, interestingly, I think Caillou's original controversy was part of what got him attention. So in Wild Brain's new cartoons, with Caillou's tantrums mostly gone, there really wasn't much left to get the attention of angry parents, critics like me, or even the Go Animate community. However, these new Caillou videos can still get a lot of attention from kids. For example, Caillou at the Water Park is relatively recent and it's still got 2 million views. Or Caillou stealing candy got 4.5 million views. Huh, interesting idea for a moral lesson. It's very clear here, Wild Brain knows what they're doing. So there's plenty of new Caillou cartoons of Caillou doing bad things, being hurt, falling from a tree, or just getting grounded. But these are much better done episodes than the original disasters we had. Maybe undoing some damage here and there? Or not. It'll forever be a mystery to me why CBS had that whiny, bally disaster moaning on their network for 20 years. Hey Josh, hmm? it's Oh, alright. Here. Have a bucket, boo. You're my best friend. Well, we were already best friends. What are you worried about? You might recognize this one. Number four. Baby Shark's Big Show. I know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Why would anyone make this? How can making a cartoon about a crappy viral earworm on YouTube be seen as anything other than a cynical cash grab? Honestly, I'm most curious if anyone actually watched this. Well, clearly someone did. Because originally, the Baby Shark show was produced in South Korea, and Nickelodeon later dubbed it from South Korean into English. Well, regardless, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, it's better than the song. The bad news is, that's the lowest bar possible in the universe of bad cartoons. Sure, the writing's beyond inane, and the dialogue's barely tolerable in its vapidness. 
But I will say, this is miles better dialogue than we used to get on those crappy live-action kids shows like Vomit Tubbies or Tweenies. Jeebus, I hated those shows. I'd say it clears the bar of Barney the Dinosaur writing too. Again, this bar is so far into the ground that I've literally stubbed my toe on it, but Baby Shark steps. In another surprising plus, the voice acting is actually pretty good. There's some surprisingly talented voice actors on display here. When I looked it up, I noticed we had a real melting pot of national Broadway talents. A surprising amount of their actors were on Broadway, like Kimiko Glenn and Luke Youngblood from The Lion King Musical. Anyway, the main problem I have with the Baby Shark show is that stupid song is constantly strumming along in the background. Is my little pup ready for breakfast? Um, do sharks sing? The answer is yes! <laughs> and once again, it gets seared into my brain if I hear it even only a moment. As you might have expected, the show was critically panned when it came out. The most frequent way reviews describe it is cash grab. And yeah, of course it's a cash grab. But can a cash grab still be good? The Lego movie was a cash grab, and it was still good. Let's see what Fade Crons thought, as they had the highest rated review on IMDb. Nickelodeon decided to grab some cash by making a show out of a song that only kids under six like. Yeah, I think that was how Breadwinners was made too. Speaking of which... The animation looks like Breadwinners. The song is annoying. The only good thing is the background colours. They look nice for little kids. 2 out of 10. And character-wise, there's really not much to define the characters here. Baby Shark, for example, is rambunctious, I guess? I just feel like I've seen this cardboard cutout excited boy in every cheap kids show for the last 25 years. The first episode story is Baby Shark has a wobbly tooth. Whoa, way to think outside the box there. I mean, I wasn't exactly expecting genius from a cartoon based on a viral YouTube earworm. But why not have some fun with a cartoon like this? Most of the kids are just going to be listening to the tune and watching the visuals anyway. Anyway, as of writing this, Baby Shark is 51 episodes and it still appears to be going strong. And I feel it's harmless enough for kids to watch. Maybe if you can blot out the horrendous background tune. If you're a parent, I'm sure it'll be miles better than having your kids on YouTube playing that stupid song on repeat. And for number three... Little Ellen. Ugh, I need my fidget spinner for this one. We can definitely flag Little Ellen as not just hated, but a catastrophe in every sense of the word. It averaged an abysmal score of 1.9 out of 10 on IMDb. So no one liked it, and certainly no one tuned in to watch it. And when the controversy over Ellen started, the series was so hated that it was cancelled before seasons 3 and 4 were ever released to the public. Before these two fully complete seasons could even be aired, the show was completely removed from HBO Max. So season 3 and 4 of Little Ellen are lost media, no one will ever see them. I hope I'm wrong on that though, as that must have been tragic for the writers and animators that completed it. So. What the hell happened? Well, when we look at the cartoon, I honestly don't know what they were expecting when they made Little Ellen. Did they think kids would be as enamoured with Ellen as the Gen X mums were? It's mostly Generation Alpha kids who'd watch this stuff anyway. And Gen Alphas are the kids of Millennials. And I just don't think Millennials like me were ever the audience of Ellen. So if Ellen can't even attract the parents, how she's meant to attract the kids? What did reviewers think? With a 1.9 out of 10, you'd think reviewers must have hated it. Let's look at Rain's review. I thought it'd be some narcissistic display of how nice Ellen is, but it's a fairly competent slice of life show about growing up in a large city. So it's a bit like Hey Arnold with Ellen. And upon watching, I agreed it was okay. The animation was nice enough, and it had some good messages. It's okay that you're sad, Charlie. We all get sad sometimes. I won't try to cheer you up anymore. I'll just be right here for you if you need me. And the stories dealt with some of life's little inconveniences as well. So why did this show get such a notoriously low score? Do those 20 fully complete episodes never being releases have anything to do with the quality of the cartoon? Probably not. It seems like the biggest gripe goes back to Ellen herself. You see, after 2020, Ellen got a much murkier reputation, and she certainly wasn't seen as a role model for kids anymore. While Ellen is tarred by many controversies over the years, 
the most recent controversy in 2020 was timed right with the release of this show. Back in the bad old days of 2020, fans were shocked to discover that Ellen wasn't actually a very nice person. Behind the scenes, staff revealed they were fired for taking funeral leave, some were told not to speak to Ellen, and apparently racial slurs were slung around the office regularly. And supposedly, Ellen just didn't care about any of it. So the best conclusion I have as to why this show was a horrible failure that bombed in reviews? It wasn't the show itself as much as the timing of its release. Ellen was no longer seen as a role model because of her nasty behavior behind the scenes. Because of the timing, some people even thought that little Ellen was a last ditch effort to save Ellen's reputation. But even if it was, I think it was just too little too late. And my sympathies to the animators and co-creators who worked on this show and never got to see their two seasons worth of work released. But let's end on a nice simple review of the show. Someone please return us to Neanderthal if this is the state of television now. Ah, oh, this one. Number two. The Adventures of Kid Danger. Oh no, there's no saving this one. This is the real deal of bad. I hated the original Henry Danger sitcom so much. I could easily call it among the five most annoying sitcoms I've ever watched. How did they manage to make a cartoon that's even worse than the canned laughter crap we got before? And of all the Nickelodeon sitcoms, why Kid Danger? Why? It had canned laughter every few seconds followed by relentlessly unfunny pauses from non-existent jokes. And every moment of silence is filled with more canned laughter. But let's get to the task at hand. Let's start with the obvious of Kid Danger. This animation looks painfully lifeless. This dead stare from Henry makes him look like he's staring through me. I've just never gotten how this type of animation is acceptable for a nationally broadcasted network. I've seen more sophisticated animation coming out of much lower budget channels on YouTube. Yet Nickelodeon thought this pig swell was acceptable? When I watch the Kid Danger Show, I find myself saying the exact same thing I continually said with the live action sitcom. How does that even qualify as a joke? And I immediately found myself playing Spot the Joke. But I lost because there were none. Like, there are so many examples. To cite the trailer alone, can you explain the actual joke to me here? Is that an invisible motorcycle? Uh, what? I, I can't hear you over my invisible motorcycle. Surely a reasonably intelligent adult should be able to figure out what they're meant to be laughing at in a trailer. But thankfully, it seems like no one likes Kid Danger. At all. Anywhere in the world? I think this kid liked it. Five stars. It's not for little kids because of dark humor. A popcorn monster dies. A kid needs his medicine. Oh look, the video's loaded up now. It's pretty violent. Characters get hit in the crotch lots. Young man, where are your full stops and basic punctuation? Not good enough, F minus minus. Anyway, IMDB was obviously full of woefully bad reviews for it. But what fascinated me most was Common Sense Media. They're simply meant to state if a show is appropriate for kids. But even they couldn't swallow this garbage as acceptable for kids. They gave it two stars and pointed out that even as basic role models, these characters suck. Captain Man is self-involved and single-minded, which hinders his role as a superhero. In general, Adults are either idiotic, vindictive, or downright mean. A deeply superficial series. So clearly the show isn't enjoyable to adults in any way, shape, and form. Let's see what the only audience capable of enjoying it thinks. Kids. From SSF27. Absurd and repetitive. The animation is off and stiff. The jokes are barely laughable and the episodes are boring from Music Lover Gig. As boring and cheesy as the show. From I Love Unicorns 132, who has my favorite name so far. I don't know why Nick even tries anymore. I remember Nick being awesome. Now it's just trying to get views. Please let your kids watch anything but this. And finally from Potter Things. 
The script is gross. Charlotte's arm gets chopped off and Henry does not care. Henry just laughs at her and sticks a hot dog in her sleeve to replace her arm. Very cringy. Guess is your opinion. Was it a failure? Thankfully, yes. Because 12 episodes in, Nickelodeon finally got the memo and cancelled the series. On the other hand, Henry Danger was a tragic success. The show even got a spin-off three-season series called Danger Force, with a Henry Danger movie coming out soon. On the bright side, maybe this low-budget junk helps Nickelodeon fund new Spongebob episodes. It's all part of the circle of dreck. Yeah, let's do one more of you. Good movie ever. You should love it. I wish you love it. Never hate it. I will give you $7,000 star rating, okay? If I was ever in the movie, I'd do perfect no. You do perfect yes, young fella. You keep enjoying it. And before we get to number one, let's go through some quick dishonorable mentions. Teen Titans Go. It seems like one of the most contentious things in my channel's history was, around 2014 to 2015, I talked about Teen Titans Go three separate times. And some people thought that was too many times to talk about it. And I get it. You know it's bad, I know it's bad. I hear some of the new Teen Titans Go episodes are better, but I just don't give a stuff nowadays, and I don't think you do either. Let's let the kids have some fun, and I'll keep trying to give you some variety. Gold Bear. You crazy, dude. And next up, Powerpuff Girls 2016. I talked about Powerpuff Girls the year it was released, and honestly, I don't have much new to say about it. Oddly enough, my favorite episode of this show was the crossover Powerpuff Girls 2016 had with Teen Titans Go, which I thought was legitimately well-written, funny, and self-aware. I'm a fan of the original Powerpuff Girls, but like a lot of old fans, I didn't enjoy the reboot much. Thundercats Raw. This one I just chatted about recently in the most hated modern cartoons. All I need to reiterate on this one is it's eye-blindingly ugly. It was just so garishly bright, it's all I remember of it. It takes a Photoshop saturation up to 500% and detonates its monitor in the process. Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs. Fun fact, this one was originally going to be number 8, but I decided, hey, no one gives a stuff about Flintstones reboots. So I just shortened it to a dishonorable mention. You know that feeling you get where you open a video trailer and you just hope the whole cartoon is a clever YouTube parody? So you can just go, oh thank goodness. After all, no one would be stupid enough to make this amateur scribble monkey trash into a show. I had that sinking heart feeling as I realized Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs was an actual show. Not that I like the original Flintstones much. Maybe it took steps to helping popularize animation in the 60s, but wow was that dialogue and laugh track bad. But now that I compare them, perhaps it is like the original Flintstones. After all, the animation looks supremely lazy and recycled, and it seems to think it's funnier than it actually is. Anyway, with those said, let's move on to number one. You suck! And last, and possibly least, number one. Thomas the Tank Engine, all engines go. 2.5 out of 10. That's not a good sign. It's worth pointing out that the original Thomas the Tank Engine show has a very, very strong following, often from train enthusiasts and just enthusiasts of animation in general. And our enthusiast friends are very, very respectful of the legacy of the late Wilbert Aldry, the creator of the original Thomas the Tank Engine series. The show had countless hours of love, respect, and care put into the original model tracks and model trains. The show is just a canvas of art whenever you see it. So when Mattel bought Thomas and Friends and tried to make a listless, dull remake of the original show with cheap animation, you're not just answering to the kids with that, you're answering to a passionate adult and parent audience. And Mattel, they'll land on you like a sumo wrestler. The Thomas audience freaking knows their trains and animation. I've never met a community like them, and almost every single one of them has written a review for the remake on IMDb. Seriously, I have not seen a cartoon get so many reviews in years. Here are just a couple of the remake reviews from the many, many fans of the show. A desecration to Audrey's legacy. This destroyed the legacy of Thomas and Friends. Mattel messed up Thomas and gave him a horrible redesign. Screw you, Mattel! But interestingly, it wasn't just older fans who felt disappointed with this Thomas remake. What surprised me the most was some of the kids' feedback. Some parents said their kids cried at the redesign of the characters. Even the small kids were saying it looked like it was for kids. 
One parent commented on Facebook, Just asked my six-year-old daughter who grew up watching Thomas. She almost cried and said she hates it. Another parent wrote, Just showed it to my son. He's so disappointed with the change in voices. He said it's not Thomas anymore and doesn't like it. On Common Sense Media, a child named Tony gave the show one star. They said, Hey y'all, these things have a stupid physics set that make the Sploon 2 inkjet seem fun to play. Then there was Daniel Tiger Thomas Fan 1225. Only reason I'm giving this two stars instead of one other than catchy theme song. This is awful. This series is a disgrace to my childhood. And watching the show, I kind of get these kids' shared disappointments. When I go back and watch a classic Thomas episode, I'd almost always get a thoughtfully narrated and visually beautiful story. When I watch it, I feel like I'm in another land. And they actually felt like real trains. But in All Engines Go, it feels like I'm watching weightless, fluffy, bouncy drawings with interchangeable personalities. One reviewer pointed out the engines bounce around the tracks like jelly and use their wheels as hands. Now, while obviously trains can't talk, the original was buried enough in reality, enough that it was simultaneously entertaining to me as a child and now as an adult. As a kid, I used to think the town of Sodor was real. I certainly wouldn't make that mistake now. It just disappointed many families of Thomas fans that All Engines Go was made purely for under fives. And Mattel confirmed this, according to a Mattel spokesperson. Thomas and Friends All Engines Go is targeted towards the next generation of fans. Kids aged two to four years, and their parents, I guess. And their parents? What? <laughs> anyway, we're pretty much on the money. All this remake was meant to be was a momentary distraction for very, very young fans. It's a shame it didn't even impress younger fans, particularly if they saw the original show. It sounds like Mattel couldn't really entertain the kids or the adults, so what are they actually doing with this show? Flexing their expensive intellectual property? The problem with All Engines Go is many parents saw it for what it probably was. Just a cynical reuse of characters we've grown to love in a way that does no justice to the amazing legacy of this show. A toy company bought it. They just want to sell these toys to kids. But Mattel, when even the kids are saying your animation is too kiddish, I'd wager you're a very silly engine. But I would like to leave on a positive note. I don't think the show is outright harmful to watch to kids. It doesn't have any bad messages. It's just flavorless cheese compared to the original show. Plus, for all the things lost, there were some interesting modern additions, such as they introduced electric trains to the Thomas crew. That's actually teaching kids something about potential future engine designs. So, you know, Mattel, props for that. Props for very little else, but props for that. And if you've got any modern kids cartoons or cartoon remakes you'd like to mention, or maybe you like these cartoons. Did you have your own take on them? Or you just feel like saying hi? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Today's member question is from Light Fury Dragon. They asked, do you plan on doing the failed slash hated adult cartoons? I guess adult cartoons are less of a niche now. That could be a fun idea. If subscribers show some interest in this video here, then yeah, I'd love to.